And away we go. <laughs> I've probably met some of you at the farmer's market. And you've probably asked me, what about glass? <laughs> or you've called me to report that somebody dumped a mattress next to the Walmart recycling bin. Uh, I'd be happy to talk with you about recycling options, including glass. And yes, you're right, that mattress does not belong there. <laughs> While I clearly believe in the value of recycling, my office at Logan Landfill has taught me just how much non-recyclable material is going to waste. We currently have seven years left of space for trash, and while we intend to expand to allow for 50 to 70 more years, the actual lifespan is determined by our behavior at home. A while back, I saw a video online that showed people in the Netherlands who fixed their neighbors' broken stuff for free. Repair cafes, as they are called, were started by Martin Postma in 2009 and have since popped up in thousands of communities around the world. That's a cool idea, I thought, but then I just went back to scrolling through the internet. <laughs> then in 2016, in September, Carla Pyle stood right here, and she talked about teaching furniture reupholstery classes as education resources for makers, and her belief that we can begin locally to, to move towards a circular economy. And sitting up in that balcony, I started to wonder if Amsterdam's repair cafe model could be brought to Montana. Then in December, uh, at the Bozeman Ice Festival, Patagonia promoted the idea of repair versus replace by performing on-site zipper repairs. They teamed up with local textile guru, the Green Darner, who zip, uh, replaced zipper sliders and patched small tears in fabric. Then in January, the Green Darner quietly organized her own repair event at Matt Brewing. I sat with a pint and watched as she sewed, patched, and zipped. It turns out that the Gallatin Valley is home to many professionals skilled in the art of repair. The skills are alive, and so is the demand. After discussions with the Green Darner, the Bozeman Makerspace, the Bozeman Bike Kitchen, Habitat for Humanity, Ace Hardware, and anybody else who would listen, I decided it was a worthy experiment. So I reserved a building at the uh, Gallatin County Fairgrounds, and for a couple of months, I don't think I had any conversations without promoting the Fix-It Clinic that I had planned for May. When the Fix-It Clinic gets started, it looks a little bit like Santa's workshop, but with fewer elves. Um, needles start stitching, screwdrivers start turning, and people start smiling. Just this one photo shows at least six different repairs being performed. Now, the people who perform those repairs, they're real rock stars. Have you ever attempted a 1,000-piece puzzle already knowing that there's a large unknown number of missing pieces. <laughs> it's fun, right? <laughs> That's kind of what these volunteers do. Uh, but then they go and they make new pieces to fill in all those gaps. They bring an assortment of tools and hope for the best, not having any clue what kinds of materials would be brought to them. We've had a married couple volunteer together, one sewing and the other using hand tools and glue, and another couple repairs bikes as a pedal-powered duo. We've also had a father-son team work together on electronics and small appliances. Joe and Harry are members of the Bozeman Makerspace and essential to the success of our fix-it clinics. But one of my favorite volunteer stories is that of Roger. Roger showed up at the fairgrounds and he quietly asked, what are you guys doing? <laughs> and then he pulled out a slip of newspaper with a list of yard sales and he said he'd be back later. He did come back and he brought some tools and an unwavering determination to fix Maureen's vacuum cleaner. And I'm still not sure if his tool theme suspenders were a coincidence or not. Now, some of the items that we see are a lot of fun to work on. We've seen child stuffed animals, dancers' tap shoes, and this lightsaber. Even Luke Skywalker needs a little repair help sometimes. But then some of the other items we see are less frivolous, and they can have a big impact on people's lives. This padded lunch bag belongs to a homeless resident who keeps their valuables protected inside. The bag's many holes were patched by the Mystery Ranch repair crew, and it can now continue to serve its owner. We intentionally chose to call these events fix-it clinics rather than the repair cafes that are so uh, common across the, the country and the globe. Uh, we wanted to emphasize the goals of education and skill sharing. Sometimes the only thing stopping us from fixing something is a fear of the unknown. So watching someone take apart your toaster or adjust your derailleur might be all it takes to gain the confidence and courage you need to try it yourself. And if all goes according to plan, visitors are empowered to attempt repairs at home long after the tools are packed away and we all part ways. 
It's not uncommon for satisfied visitors to pay it forward by returning later at other events as volunteers. The potential to create a local culture of skill sharing, generosity, and thrift are very real. And because the main goal for me is to reduce landfill waste, every item gets weighed during the check-in process. That way we know exactly what kind of impact we're having on our community and the landfill. Now even though Bozeman's not a huge city, we are seeing results that are not very different from big places like Toronto or Minneapolis. Between our first two events, we've had uh, volunteers helping 100 people fix 140 items weighing approximately 800 pounds. And repaired items include necklaces, flashlights, clothing, bicycles, backpacks, stuffed animals, furniture, kitchen appliances, fans, record players, musical instruments, and many others. I'm hoping those visitors will continue to fix another 800 pounds of material at home. And the great thing about social media ads is that you can track the demographics of who's being reached. Our Facebook ads reach twice as many women as men, the RSVP list is mostly women, and the actual attendance numbers show a female majority as well. I may not be qualified to interpret those numbers, but I do find them interesting, and it will remain our goal to organize events that are welcoming and empowering to all who join us. Now remember, everything, everything we own will one day end up in a landfill, but it's us, up to us to decide when. With a little curiosity, a shot of confidence, and 20 minutes of YouTube, you can fix almost anything. With two successful events in Bozeman, the Fix-It Clinic is ready to leave the nest. We'll be coming to the Bo Belgrade Community Library on Saturday, November 18th, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So if you have a natural curiosity and a tool of some sort, if you know how to sew on a button, that's all it takes, uh, we hope you'll join us in keeping Gallatin County out of the landfill. Toss it, no way.